And welcome everybody to Locked On iRacing Podcast. I am Wilco and I'm back here for another week. It has just been week four in season four in 2024, all the fours. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about a few things and explain to you what's happening for the rest of the week. Uh, We did the Bathurst 1000 on the weekend and I've got a lot to say about it. And you turned out really well to watch the race. So thank you so much to all those who did, those who didn't and those who did want to hear a recap from me and buzzer uh he just going through exactly what happened it's one of those things that i don't want to talk to about just my side of the the race i want to talk to buzzer about his side of the race and what he thought of everything going together so i'm going to get him aside at some stage this week we're going to sit down and talk about it and drop that as an extra episode this week we're also less than two weeks away from jmac heading out on his box rally attempt after me and Vic did took the Scorpion from Melbourne to Alice Springs earlier on this year, raised over $7,000 for charity. Uh, J-Max just hit the $10,000 mark and he's less than two weeks to go. So I'm going to pull him in at some stage this week, maybe early next week, but most likely later this week and just see how his nerves are faring and see how prepared he is for what lies ahead of him as he battles his way. I think it's from Bendigo to Townsville. So um, I look forward to having a chat to him. So there's, there's two bonus episodes you will get this week. So in this episode, however, you will not get me talking about the Bathurst 1000. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. The shorts are already hitting uh, the YouTube feeds and the Facebook reels and uh, TikTok at the moment. So keep an eye out for them. We're slowly going to eat them or I'm slowly going to get them out over the next, I'd say, two or three weeks. You'll probably get them Uh, i'm still trying to work out what i'm going to do with the rest of the video there's a six hour video there uh which i don't want to just put down as one video on youtube it's still up as the live stream for all those people and thank you to those who have gone back and had a look at it uh had a look at where we started it where we finished is what the analytics is saying but we're still getting views on that so i'm leaving that up for the moment but i am tempted to do a channel 10 style or fox sports style here's the first hour here's the second hour here's the third hour and just two highlights packages for the six videos for those who who want to see parts that i thought were the most important of our races um there were big stretches there that not a lot happened um we just tried to keep it on the road and that was the main thing but i'm trying to work out if i get time to do that content i will do that content if i don't get time to do that content the, the stream will stay up for the moment uh, not like the rest of the streams that are coming down straight away. Uh, I'm then turning them into video for those who want to go and watch the, just the race part of it. So that seems to be working for it pretty well for those who are enjoying that. But here is me talking about just week four without the special event of Bathurst 1000 in there. So uh, we will then give it to something else right at the very end. Uh, but at this stage, we're just talking about that. Uh, we're just going to talk about... Um, community the, the the racing team that is locked on and a, a lot of things have been mentioned just recently between me and a few other people about uh, teams and leagues and all that kind of stuff that sort of um you know keep people racing and and i want to touch on that we've done it before in the past but this is just my aspect of it right now uh, but let's get on to where this week started so we got to tuesday i was really hard practicing for the Bathurst 1000 so officials clicked over on Tuesday wasn't going to do a production car race at that stage because I really needed to get some practice in for the night the the strength of field or the the Tuesday Australian time server for the Bathurst race uh for week four and was not feeling confident needed to feel confident for Saturday so this race was going to be about just staying on track and making sure that I could get to the end without an issue. Uh, we picked up a, a setup, Chastity put one together, which uh, seemed to be really fast with all the guys in the Banner Alliance. They seemed to enjoy it, but you had to be very careful on said setup. Uh, and, and especially me and both me and Buzzer found it extremely hard to get this thing up and down the hill uh, safely. It, it was quick when it, when you got it right, but when you didn't get it right, you were inches away from from dying on every lap and we we needed to be ready for the weekend we needed to be able to do 161 laps safely 
that was the end goal for the Bathurst 1000. So going into Tuesday night's practice race, uh, we, we, we used it and I went in very underprepared and how I thought I was for, for the Saturday was, was very underprepared. I hadn't done enough laps. I'd done a few, but wasn't really feeling hugely confident. But we got in there, October 1, Tuesday night, and I started 16th out of a fairly strong field. We had uh, a roundabout, let's, I'm just pulling it up now. It was 25 or 29, 25 cars. We went to three splits on on Tuesday night. We went to three splits for Bath. It always brings the people out. Uh, so it was good. Once again, we had uh, both Buzz and Jeremy from Locked On Lads in there. And, um, but the strength of field was, was quite impressive for a, Tuesday night split two and and we've been hitting split three or I've personally been hitting split, split three whenever this thing goes to three splits so for me to jump into a 2000 strength of field uh was a little bit daunting we also had uh the likes of Roy Clark in the server Darren Shannon from um the Banter Alliance as well so we were pretty populated in this um in this server for, from just the, the handful of us that were, were all in the one group so uh, I went into this with a 16.27 I rating uh, in a 2014 strength of field and was not feeling confident whatsoever. Anyway, we put down the, the 16th qualifying, which once again, not unhappy with. Um, I, I knew I wasn't going to be getting very far in this race whatsoever as far as winning this thing. Uh, I was car number 25 in this field i was the last car to make this group i should have been split three so just finishing this race was going to be a win uh anything above 25th was going to be um better than i was expecting to go so that's where we started we we dropped it dropped into the race um got a few laps under our belt watched a few cars um drop and um all out and crash and all that kind of stuff. However, I just kept on persisting and got a got a few little issues every now and then, but never really was never able to keep up with anyone. Uh, we sort of as I do drifted drifted from fifteenth or sixteenth back to um, we got sixteenth. We got a spot and then we dropped back down to about twentieth and sort of just sat there and let cars crash out on the way through. Uh, once again, we went long on fuel we jumped in at lap 12 of 22 so we had 10 to go at the end uh came back out we we gained a spot in the pits and then we just traveled towards the end we weren't really in a battle with anyone uh we just sort of was was all about keeping it off the wall and getting there and you know buzz had not had a really good one he'd he'd had a bit of an incident uh it was only a very little incident but it gave him a meatball with like four seconds of of required repairs it was ridiculous i think we we think he'd blown a tire by hitting the wall um but uh with about six to go so he wasn't feeling the best uh i got around to the final lap i had roy clark clark a lap down on me behind me i had uh it was at samuel wright uh about 15 16 seconds back behind me no one in front of me uh well, i think it was jamie tongue actually the guy i'm battling with the championship with for um the division five and uh, Coming down through the dipper, I actually said to Roy, look out, I'm just going to tippy-toe down here, make sure I get through this and just finish this race. Wasn't feeling confident at all. Had lost all kinds of confidence. And then coming down through the dipper, I just got all kinds of wrong and um, tangled up, tail flipped out and put the nose into the wall. Um, was able to drive back up the road, flick spin it okay and then start driving down the road, but... Um, we had a meatball and the steering. Actually, I don't think we had a meatball. It was just the steering was almost at um, 90 degrees, the wheel. So we were um, coming down the hill. I uh, got to the chase and Sam had, had come up behind me and I wasn't going to be able to hold him off. So I just went straight at the chase, uh, let him go past, rolled in just ahead of Buzzer um, and finished 15th out of, out of a starting of 16th and a car field of 25. So... Job was not done. <laughs> 22 laps when we were doing 161 on the weekend and both of us came out of it way less confident uh, than 
what we went in and it was um some questions were being asked wednesday morning to, between me and him about what we were to do and uh we we talked to jamie uh jeremy jeremy went really well in that race and uh was consistent uh which was the main thing we wanted so we talked to him he had a set that he was using so we we went to that set pivoted to that set on wednesday i did some laps felt fairly confident and actually felt fairly fast on it and uh, considering what times i was doing the night before and um we made the call to jump to this set because buzz had a bit of a crack at it and it was really good so that's where we ended up and didn't really change much from there uh, but then we went into Wednesday and I had a, another race. Oh, so just quickly, that was my one Australian server race this week. Um, I did an American server race, which I'll get to soon. Uh, but in the Australian race, I didn't get a huge amount of championship points out of that. Jamie finished ahead of me in that race by two spots. I came out of it with, um, I'm, I'm now on 249. I'm one point ahead of Jordan Williams. Uh, from Australia as well. In Division 5, I'm 28 points behind uh, Jamie now in Division 5 as well. So we're sitting second at the moment. Uh, we've got, we've only had the six starts for the season uh, compared to 10 and 13 from the other two, but um, we're in the race still, which is the main thing. So four weeks in, We've still got nine to go, so there's plenty of time there uh, to catch that up. But uh, that's the update on the supercars. Okay, so then we went to uh, the production car challenge on Wednesday. I, I wasn't hugely interested. I missed the, the week before at Navarra. And I, look, I wanted to get back into it because we missed it, but I wasn't that keen. It was that... Um, Orsha's Lieben, which is where we're doing the V8 Vets on Thursday. So I didn't really want to, you know, jump in the, the 86 and ruin all the practice I'd had for, in the supercar. But um, it was Wednesday. I think I'd watched a Dave Cam video, actually, and I got, oh, so look, I've really got to make a video. I'm not going to stream it. I just want to make this video. And and it was, it was a last-minute decision. I got all, you know, hyped up and excited to do it. So... I jump and it was okay cool a little bit of time i can do a little bit of practice here let's go i know the track i've been practicing it for all week for the, the vet so let, let's give it a crack and i jumped into it on wednesday and qualified um it's really hard to read the qualifications on the website but from memory i didn't qualify that well to be honest um it was it was down around the the sixth or seventh fifth or sixth or seventh. There was only about eight cars in our class, so um, it wasn't um, wasn't the biggest. Oh, Eleven in our class. Sorry, there we go. Eleven in our class. Um, and look, I was car number twenty one for the field. Now of that, it was a fairly high split, and I was in top split, so two two zero five overall strength of field. Uh, and once again, I'm going in with 1686 at this stage after getting a, a little bit of a bump uh, from the night before with that uh, supercars race. And look, I I came into it, like I said, not too excited, um, but let's give it a crack. And I started 15th on track. So of the 86s, that would put me fourth, um, fourth or fifth. We weren't too bad. We had a fairly good time. I was pretty confident with my time I'd put in quality, uh, in practice, sorry. I think we, I thought we were pretty smack on. Me and another guy were having a back and forth and um, in the practice server, I was doing the fast lap and he was doing it, beating it by 0.1 and I was beating it by 0.1 and we just worked our way down into the 138s, which was pretty good for the 86s around there. And um, we... We started. I didn't go very well at uh, the start. They all got away. Um, I'm not getting the rolling starts very well at all. So, unfortunately, that's where we, we went. And sort of dropped back sixth or seventh, I think it was, and um, of that of that crew. And, yeah, didn't really 
know what to do from there because I had the pace and I just couldn't get past anyone. And then we were sort of in that horrible position. I hate in the multi-class races, especially in um, this one in particular. Yeah, the MX-5s are so close on pace. So fast MX-5s started coming up behind me and I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm faster than when I get it going, but I just can't because I'm stuck behind these guys and I'm not getting the runs I need to. It's really hard to overtake uh, at this track, but uh, anyway, we we got one of them got past. The second one's there trying to bully the way past as well, and I'm like, well, I'm trying to get past as well, but cool, no problems. You guys do this. I'll try and sneak through past this car when um, you guys sneak through, and we come around so you got the left 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 and then the three-quarter circle almost hairpinny uh right hander and the mx5s dive down the inside of old mate because he's gone wide in the 86 and as he's come wide and come back on he's come back over in front of me i'm on his tail he's about to cut my nose off but the mx5 is still there so he hits the back of the mx5 which then spins the mx5 right in front of me I go through somehow, don't hit anyone, and I get a 4x for it, but there's no damage. There's no, I don't lose lose momentum or anything. It just, it's, I'm driving as if I don't hit a thing, but there's a 4x there. I look in the rear vision mirror, MX, uh, the MX-5 that got spun's obviously out. 86 is out, and then the two other MX-5s that were following me have then rear it, and I oh, hit these cars that are spun as well. So out of five cars going through, I'm the only one who actually succeeds in getting through unscathed. Puts a gap between me and MX-5s. Excellent, that's what I wanted. Nose down and uh, head down and keep going. And the cars in front are about four or five seconds up the pace, maybe maybe even more. They're battling. I've got the pace. Here we go. We're, we're battling for about fifth or sixth at this stage. So it, they're fourth, fifth, and sixth. So I'm coming up on them as sixth place. Um, we then get in this battle that lasts about five or six laps of the 16 laps that we're going for. And it's these guys had already been battling for about three or four laps before I got to them. Um, I keep on getting runs, and because there's two cars in front, one's left, one's right, trying to overtake each other. So as I try and get a run to get past one, I get held up by the other, lose momentum. The other one gets momentum, and I end up the third of the the three cars anyway so we do this back and forth we almost hit each other we get a few taps zero x's all the way through and then all of a sudden i look up and we're battling for third there's a car that's had to pit or there's a car that's damaged whatever happened it's third fourth fifth now we've lost one cool excellent we're actually battling for the podium here this is really cool fun and the guys like charlie and um jeff were the two other drivers american drivers they're yelling out over comms, or, or Charlie is anyway, he's streaming it on his on his channel, O-H, O-N-H, underscore racing, I believe it was, uh, New Hampshire, N-H-O, New Hampshire operator, uh, underscore racing. Um, he was streaming it, and he's like, ah, oh, this is amazing, thank you so much. He always takes me off the road once or twice, but, you know, it's all in fun of battle, and... Um, Jeffrey sneaks past him finally and, and kicks away. So it's just me and Charlie racing away. And uh, we've got GT4s in the BMWs coming through, which is, you know, mucking up the momentum as well. Um, then all of a sudden we realise one of the cars in front out again. It's either pitted or damaged or, or something's happened. And now we're battling in our two. So Jeffrey's gone on to get second and we're battling here for third and fourth. Here we go need to get this i want the podium i wasn't thinking about that going into this race but i really want the podium now so putting it on i'm definitely faster than charlie i i, I know this because the times we're doing at this stage are just not comparable to what i was doing in practice and i know he's getting held up by me diving and i wasn't really diving but i'm just trying to get the right spot uh but finally after the back straight i get in behind him i get the run and i dive down the inside before the right hander which flicks back to the left hand, and now I give him plenty of room, that's fine. Uh, even on the kickback, when you come back on the left hand, he's still got room. Uh, I just practiced that section more than anything else to get right, because I knew that was where I was losing time in the V8, and I made sure that I got the the momentum through there better than I had been getting it, and that's where the time was going to be saved in the supercar for, for vets. 
and it was working the 86 as well. I was really nailing that section and it showed every time I got close to these guys, that's where I'd get interrupted and that's where I had my chance to overtake and that's where I snuck it through with a couple of laps to go. I snuck ahead. Jeffrey had then found himself ahead of us by about four or five seconds and I just couldn't... I, we were just matching pace at that stage but, but I was leaving Charlie behind. So uh, at that stage, third, I'm happy with it. Cool. So we finished that race only, uh, what was it, a couple X in that incident, six X in that incident. Most of them were off tracks when I'm trying to get around these guys in front. There was no, oh, there was the four X from that MX-5 as well. So um, 81 championship points in that. Uh, we are one round different to everyone else in this series. So that's, you got to keep that in mind. Um, overall, though, uh, all divisions, we are currently sitting at 275th, which is fine. In the, this is in the 86s. Uh, but right now we're sitting 32nd. We are one race askew from everyone else. Charlie that I'm racing against in that, that series, or in that race, he's sitting 7th on 269. I'm on 206. One race behind everyone because we didn't do Navara. So I'm pulling about 80 points out of that. Uh, every... Every race, uh, we've got Imola this week, which I should be doing now, but I'll probably end up doing that one tomorrow. Uh, so Imola's a pretty confident place, but, you know, we're 170 70 points off. We do need to somehow find a bit more than the 80 uh, to get first, but I don't really think we're going to get that. But I'm only 100 points off third. So, you know, we need a very good result for that one, but... We're getting higher in the in the I rating uh, at the moment. We're at almost seventeen two. I think it is seventeen twenty. Uh, so we are going to get ourselves in the higher splits. And if you finish higher in the higher splits, you get more championship points. So we are getting to that point. Where we might be able to get some uh, good result out of this. But yeah, <laughs> interesting. Just looking at the incident points from the, the three races. I've got nine total for the series so far out of three races. Uh, first place. In 10, 10 races has 63. Uh, third, second place, sorry, uh, in 22 races has 174 incident points. <laughs> so um, you can see the different style of driving going into that one big time. Now, before I get on to Vets on Friday, which will be the last one I talk about, I'm going to quickly jump ahead of schedule. And we're going to go to uh, the V8 Americas. Because I got home Friday morning, I said I need practice at work. Uh, to work, I need practice because I just need practice for Bathurst. And there's a race on. It's going to have a pretty good strength of field and it's going to have a lot of people rock up. So um, that is interesting. I just finally went to the, 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 the leaderboard for that series. I'm currently leading the championship now after two races in Division 5. Now, not many people are doing that from Division 5, that series. Uh, the American version of it, so that that is why. But we got 161 points out of only two starts in that series, which is um, it might be a regular one on the schedule from here on out because uh, it's it's a good strength of field, it's good practice, and um, yeah, it's just that last little bit. I've already practiced all up to that to that race, so yeah, it's it's a pretty good one. So we started. Uh, it was only one split, but there was. I know there was two splits. It went two splits on Friday. Uh, so 50 cars registered. So there was 25 in each. Uh, I was in the bottom split of a 1558 supercar series. And I was car number 12. So I was sitting mid-pack as far as performance went. And uh, we went out there. We started 11th. We qualified 11th in this field. Now this is coming up against a few people that I'd raced pretty regularly and also the that I'd um yeah I, I'd raced fairly regularly and I'd seen a few of these people uh so it, I knew whereabouts I sat in the field but it was a matter of just trying to once again it wasn't about winning it was about getting confidence in the car which I was not confident in that car and we had the Bathurst 12 hour oh, sorry Bathurst 1000 only 12 hours away or oh, 24 hours away so it was really about getting ready for that, getting confidence up for that race. And ooh, I started and went 
all around that track for 22 laps with a 0x. Car was in one piece. Did everything just about perfect to the point where got across the start finish line with enough fuel to get around Hell's Corner and that's it. We ran out of fuel going around Hell's Corner. I, I really concentrated. It, it's What I'd been lacking in vets is getting the right amount of fuel into the car and not losing time in the pit lane and that's how I jumped ahead of a few people. Uh, so I went into the pits and... Uh, I'm going to butcher the name, but Matthew uh, was behind me by about three or four seconds and had been closing down on me really quickly. He had not pitted yet, so I pitted a little bit earlier, but I knew exactly. I went, okay, there's, it wants me to put in 30 litres. I think I can get away with 28, so let's put 28 litres in instead of going. So he wanted 30, 30, so it was going to put in 32 just to make sure as far as the auto thing, but I went, no, no, we're going to change this. We're on 28 I'm going to save that four sec. Oh, the f it turns out to be yeah. I'm going to save that that four liters or four liters of fuel time in the pits, and we're going to come out ahead. And we came out 20 seconds ahead of Matteo, so you might have had an incident going into the pits. I might have had a better outlap. I don't know, but we we gained 16 seconds out of that pit stop period uh, on that on that person as well. So uh, we came out and then that is the point when I realized about two laps into the stint that I was not going to make it. But it was close. So I adjusted my driving and we lifted going halfway down Conrod and rolled into the chase. We were losing a little bit of time, but not a huge amount. We were lifting going down the dipper a lot more. Uh, so over Skyline, we were just lifting right down to almost uh, the kink before forest uh, sort of area. We just weren't using throttle at all. I wasn't. And... Um, even going up into the cutting, I was lifting well and truly and coasting into the cutting because there's no cars around me. And I just had the a pace I had to maintain and a fuel usage I had to maintain. And we, I, I did a few 4.1 and 4.2 litre laps instead of the 4.4 that I was doing. Saved the 0.1 a couple of times, 0.2 a couple of times, and we got ourselves to the point where I didn't need to fill up anymore. So we were good. And I belted to the end, matched the pace of Matthew behind, matched the pace with the guys in front. No issue whatsoever. And came in eighth in a field of 25 with a car number of 12, gained 34 I rating out of it, which put me on to 1720, which unfortunately, <laughs> it doesn't help for the Bathurst 1000 on the weekend because we wanted a lower split. But we will get to that on another podcast. Uh, the upside of this is my safety rating was... In the doldrums at the end of season three, we almost lost our A license. And I didn't really care at that stage if we lost it, but we almost did. And it was 1.2, I think we got down to. We're up to 3.78 at this stage. So uh, we've had a really good season for, for safety wise. But um, that was a really good result. I was really happy with that. And the main thing is there, I had the confidence going to Saturday finally. Uh, we I'd done practice for that. I'd done that race, and I ended up working out that I'd done about 70-something laps on that Friday for a 0x. So at that stage, we were in a really good spot for, for Saturday. But back to Vets, the big one. V8 Vets round three came along. I'd really worked hard. I'd watched the training video that they put up and, and understood a few mistakes I was making where I thought I, I just couldn't find any more time. I'd got a 126 flat in practice. I could get that pretty easy, but a lot of the people were doing 125 flats. Uh, not a lot, but 125 and a half seemed to be the, the front of the field minus Russell. And that's where I wanted to be consistently, but I wasn't. I could drop fuel, um, chuck some fresh tyres on and do it. No problems at all. Uh, I could also... Um, I, I felt that I was doing consistent 126 flats longer than most people, which I, when you go through the data on the, the practice results, a lot of them were doing doing it all one or two laps and then going pitting, one or two laps going and pitting, and they were getting those those 125 mids. I wasn't too concerned about 126 flats, but I knew there was more time there because everyone else was doing quicker time. So I watched the video and found a few spots which made sense on why I wasn't 
gaining I was, why I was losing time on what I probably should be doing. And we're talking like half a second over a you know, a one point was it one point two five lap. One second half a second to one second is nothing. It's like one, two corners doing it slightly off and you you're down three or four tenths. So did that, found the spot, didn't really get much time to practice it because that was Friday, that was, sorry, that was Wednesday night I watched that video, or Thursday afternoon actually. Went into the, the Thursday pre-race server, or so the race server which had the, the hour practice and started practicing what I just watched, which is not the ideal way to do it, people. It's just not. <laughs> but no matter, that's what we did. And jumped in was doing laps pretty consistently in the 125s and all of a sudden well, I thought here we go did you got the the sort of fourth or fifth or sixth best time in the server again oh here we go and this was consistent and I think there were still spots where I felt like I could improve I wasn't quite getting it all right like the first half of that practice session I was all over the shop and I do put it down to a little bit of I was practice. I did the 86 the day before, and I hadn't done any practice since like sort of Monday. So I'd got a really good time by Sunday, Monday, and then I'd focus on Bathurst. But then jumped in the 86, and then jumped the the next thing I did besides. Uh, actually, I think I just took a break from Bathurst because I'd pushed myself too hard. I got to a point where I was happy, but I just needed a quick break. So I did the 86, and hadn't touched anything until that afternoon. I might have done a little bit, but it just didn't feel right, right? <laughs> so the first half of the server, I'm just all over the shop spinning, and, which is usually a good sign for me, but um, then it all clicked. Uh, I told chat to, I was actually concentrating too much on chat when I was streaming, but that's another thing. But anyway, we focused, we got it, and we got some really good times out of it. And then came quality after round two mishaps of quality. I, I really tried to focus on it. And I did what I felt was a fairly slow opener, which put us in fourth. I thought, you oh, hold on. And really pushed the second one because I thought, here we go. We can get, you know, almost front row or front two rows here. We can keep fourth. If I just need to put in and shave a couple tenths off. Because I wasn't, wasn't watching the time. I didn't know what time went across the line. I thought it was a mid-126. I thought, oh, yeah, it's not very good. But it ended up being a, a mid the high 125, like it was a high 125. So we thought, oh, okay, here we go, push it, and then I'll lose it on the back, just the first corner off the back straight, just push too hard. Little tire dips onto the dirt. We were probably down. I'd made a mistake um, previous. I was trying to catch up and push. I knew I was going to make time there, but um, was going to be quicker, but dipped the toe onto the uh, dirt, which spun me. So... That was the end of that. And then, oh, here we go. We're going to be back down to 10th or 12th or something other as everyone catches up. But we don't. We hold on to 5th. And I'm a little bit nervous at this stage because here we come into uh, vets and I've started 21st and 13th, promising all this potential and we get to the race and I'm 5th. And I'm sitting there talking to stream. Um, they're pretty good where once, especially with vets, once I'm on racing, they sort of do the comments, but they don't expect me to talk back. They, they want me to focus and, and watch me do well. And just explaining the line locker button to the chat, the lights, had, the, black, the black lights had come on. It was about to start the red countdown to, to green. And I was in the zone of explaining to them I was concentrating on just get a good start and it went from black to red and my brain just clicked. Let's go. And I've lifted the button and put it straight back down. But I'd rolled. And I'm like, oh, no. So there it is, black flag. We got a jump start penalty from fifth on the grid and then spun the wheels. So not only that, couldn't hold on to fifth, ended up going back down to about ninth by the first corner because we'd spun the wheels, got a little sideways and just could not get a run, had all these people overtake us. And at that stage, I'm like, well, just got to survive this lap. I just need to get out of the running from everyone. I just will take the penalty. There was a thought of let's just keep racing. Let's get some clearance on, the, on some of the guys down the back. I'll jump in, do the drive through, come out, and I probably won't lose all the positions. I only lose most of them. 
but I felt like I was then racing around people that weren't in my race anymore. Because, and if I hurt one of them while I was relegated to the back of the field but not taken the penalty yet, I thought probably not the best way to, to make friends and influence people, as they say. But uh, so at the end, especially I had a few close calls, didn't want to, uh, and I just, at the end of the lap, I just went, okay, that's it, let's go in. Hung my head in shame, drove through pit lane, Come out the other side, dead last by about 10 seconds on the field. So um, put the put the head down and, and started lapping and then quickly came across some other cars that had spun. Uh, unfortunately, really hard to pass the track on, hard track to pass on, especially when you're a driver who's not very good at passing. Uh, couldn't quite get the passes made, even on these back markers, uh, and, and was losing time yet again. And there's nothing I can do at this stage. Like, I can't drop in and take a pit stop and go further back. It's just I've, I need to make this pass. And finally got got one pass, then made my way up to a few other cars, got, made a few more passes, and then people started. You know, there was incidents and stuff like that. And then people started pitting for some reason early, and we, we sort of fought our way back up to, I fought my way back up to about um, 16th, 17th, 18th. Uh, then everyone had pitted. I was one of the last ones to pit yet again. We got back up to about fifth or so, but we had Russell in front of us. So there was no point going an extra lap and trying to get that at bonus point because we already had the leader in front of us. So we we're never going to get a point for bonus, point for leading. So took the fuel stop on 15, on 18 or 15 or 16 or 18, whichever one it was. And, um, then chucked in just enough fuel uh, for 75 litres, so it wasn't enough to get to the end, but we needed about 25 more to go in by the end of the race. So well, that was a pretty good spot. If we can run that out dry, 25 covers the tyres, and we'll just go to the the tyres wear out and, and come in and, and splash the 25 and go again. And came back out, I think we were in 20-something we dropped back down. So we'd made, I'd made, there's 29, 31 cars in the, in the field. So I'd made about 10, 15, 10 spots for the first stop and then pushed through, uh, forced, bullied a few people, I guess, as I call it, just got on their tail and, and either they made a slight mistake or they decided to pit for the second time as, as, we, as we're working our way back through the field. I know I've got pace because I can see my delta compared to everyone else on the track, and there was a few few laps where we were uh, sort of better than everyone bar two or three cars. So I knew, and it was a second, second and a half, two seconds better than most of the field. So we were making headway on, on the rest of the field as we're driving through. I've got Russell Uren, who's the leader of the race, nine seconds behind me. I'm like, oh, just, I'm praying for a safety car. Like, the safety car had to come in the first five or six laps, we would have, everything would have been nullified. We would have been at the back of the field, but we wouldn't have had that big delta between us and the leaders. And we could have worked our way back in with, especially with pit strategy. I think we could have got back into the top five, but, um, the delta was there and I wasn't making time on the leaders. Russell wasn't catching up to me. He stayed nine to second, nine seconds or so behind the whole way through that, that stint it was people were, were pitting and that's when I decided we'd definitely have to stay out to the end of this while ever I'm making time on them but not having to overtake them it's a win so pushed and pushed and pushed we by the end of it we weren't making time on with the leaders we're about a second off the leaders again but that's because they had fresh rubber I didn't but we weren't in their race so it wasn't really concerned especially when there's no safety car and we're about 40 laps into a 55 lap race it's just like well we're never going to get back to there. We just need to be overtaking as many people as we can before I have to pit. And we got way back up. I got back up to eighth or so before I pitted. Um, and then pitted and came out in 12th or 13th, I think it was, and had two cars eight to nine seconds down the track. And the first few laps, now I had only 25 litres of fuel in the car. It was a really light car. We had fresh rubber. So the first flying lap, I, I really put some effort in, and we were the delta was eight to nine tenths down on my fastest lap at that point, going into the last corner, and I just spun the wheels coming out uh, of the last corner and got the car a little sideways, which lost us about four tenths, five tenths, and we put down a mid 
125, which wasn't the fastest lap of the race, but it was damn close. And we'd lost four tenths. I'd lost four tenths in that last corner. So we would have, I would have been the fastest lap of the race. And that's, that would have been the bonus point or bonus just there. So unfortunately didn't get that. But uh, then we're catching this, these cars by about two seconds a lap with about five to go. So we're in, we can, we can get these guys, we can get almost top 10 here and safety car. Oh no, I can't do anything about this. I just have to, we're not going to get anyone on stops. We're not going to be able to use this to our advantage, except for we're going to bring us all compacted back up. So once again, Russell's only just behind me. So we're the last car that sneaks through on the lead lap. Go right around, catch up to everyone. We're now sitting uh, 12th with two laps to go when they restart the cars again. We've got the freshest rubber on the track. It's in a really good spot but I'm terrible at restarts and I'm terrible at passing. So um, I'm definitely quicker than everyone for the next four or five cars ahead, but I just can't use it. But fresh rubber should be right. And then first lap, uh, Pato and, and Monday come together, unfortunately, and they spin. We get through that. I get through that unscathed. That's cool. Get, get on the other side of that. And there's two spots, so we're all somewhere in the top ten. Well, here we go. Top ten from last on the last on the on the track after lap one. Uh, it's a pretty good effort. Then we get to the same corner again, and another two cars go, and all of a sudden, um, and then there's a third car that makes a mistake as well, and all of a sudden we're halfway through the last lap, and I'm in seventh. Hold on, here we go, uh, and end up yeah coming home in seventh after. Probably what was the most eventful <laughs> race that you can say. Um, I went from fifth on the grid and finished seventh. Uh, it doesn't really sound like much, but when you take into account that I started fifth, ended up seventh, but went backwards to last after one lap, uh, it was, I was really proud of it. Anyway, so, um, you know, it wasn't driver of the day by any standards because I don't think many people caught what happened, but um, it was definitely my best drive in Vets so far. Uh, it gives me, gives, me, um, it gives me the confidence that I, can, I should be up there. Uh, it gives me the ability to, to go for things like one lap lead and uh, fastest lap for bonus points. Uh, I need to start pushing that no incidents. Like I've got the, we got black flagged in the first race and then I come out of this one uh, with only nine, but we were pushing at the end and we were using them up because we'd already used the zero X. So it, uh, we lost the zero X. So um, there is that, but um, come out of it fifth to seventh, such a boring sounding race yet. We were 31st and um, worked our way back up to seventh. Uh, with very little uh, assistance from a safety car except for a couple laps to go, which, which got us, you know, five spots. But even 5th to 31st, back to 12th, I was extremely happy. And, you know, chat was really happy. And, and it was one of those things that, that gave me the confidence to go into the weekend. So I'm hoping that next round um, it'll be interesting. I need to learn... Long Beach in a supercar. I know Long Beach. Long Beach is a really good track, but I don't know it in a supercar, and it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be about staying off those walls, uh, not making mistakes, especially with the terrible roundabout and the the, the multitude of right hand corners. Oh, sorry, right angled corners in in this track. It's going to be one that you need to stay safe in. So we'll see how we go, but. Um, I think it's only a sprint race though, so it'll be a little bit better to try and survive. But um, that's my week of vets and that's my week of racing without talking about the Bathurst 1000 too much. Uh, so uh, quickly, we're going to head into um, the only reason I could do something like the Bathurst 1000 was because I, I, I created a team and people formed around me. So... Um, we came out of A-League that we all sort of raced together and then a few other people 
when we did the podcast have sort of jumped on board as well, which is crazy to remember the fact that we were a place where people were going to, um, they were enjoying the content that much and the, and the morals that we aligned with, that, that's what they aligned with, that we, they came in uh, to, to race with us. Now they're integral parts of the team. Like it's, it's a crazy, crazy world that, that that's a thing. And we, look, we're, we're never going to, like we've won some Aussie car series. Uh, we, we've got a fair few trophies along those lines. We've never won an enduro uh, in an official. We've done really well in, in a fair few things, but we're there, we're the battlers. We're the ones who are just not making up the numbers, but we're, we're there having a crack every time. And when we outperform ourselves, it goes unnoticed. But that's what we are. We just want to, we're, we're battling with ourselves 90% of the time. But uh, we, we work together as a team. Like I would not have got to do a Bathurst 1000 without Buzz sitting there pushing me along. And then even working alongside the banter guys. It was probably three months ago that I could not keep a supercar on the track for the life of me. And working closely with them and working closely with um, my team and Buzzer and Jeremy even. and um, having them the support of those guys is just it's unreplaceable like you can't go into sim racing and go through everything and become a better racer without like unless you're a very unique individual you just can't get there without that so um if my team is listening thank you so much for everything it's been an amazing ride where we're about three to four years into having Locked On Racing or Locked On Lads. We, we just still haven't nailed down a name for it, to be honest, but Locked On Lads is a brand. So Locked On Lads is the team, I guess, right now. That's what we're going with. So uh, we've got three of, uh, two of us in the, the vets. Uh, we will be, we are doing officials. There's three of us that do officials each week. We're trying to do uh, some more GT3 stuff. We're not really doing the open wheel stuff we used to we, where we started, um, but that's just, time and and everything at the moment but um if if you can find like-minded people that share the same morals ethics and goals as you do um i would recommend trying to find a team if you haven't already uh, or building one around some people that you really like it's the, the the morals and the ethics is the one thing but it's the goals so we've got a goal of just you know competing we're not when our goal is not to win every race we hop into it's and we're not going to practice to the point where we we do win every race but we are going to compete and we're going to put our best effort in uh every single time whether it's with little practice or or no practice at all or, or a significant amount of practice it's we we have the goal of finishing enduros when we go into them and that requires more practice than a normal league race but other than that, it's competing rather than winning is the goal behind Locked On Lads, and it's the ethics of doing it right. Like, you know, everyone else can worry about stacking teams so they get the right eye rating for, for a split. We just rock up and we go, and wherever we end up, we end up, and we just do our best out of that. You know, we're, we're not going to... We're, we're just there to, A, have fun, B, relax from our normal lives and see have time with each other that's it so um, if you can find like i said someone or people or groups that align with all those things those those three things i talked about then jump in a team it's um it's helped me out a lot and i've done a lot with that i couldn't have done without these guys so anyway that is this week from Locked On iRacing. You'll see more of us or hear more of it this week. It'll be a special week, uh, extra episodes. It'll be back to normal scheduling from then on until I can work out a better way to do this. There might be a few chats as Gen 3 Supercars comes up. I'd say there's going to be some announcements this week being Bathurst week from iRacing and Supercars. You might get to look at a few things or uh, we might get a date on Pukekohe or something like that. They usually chat around Bathurst 1000 time. Um, the other thing is too, they did just announce uh, in between Christmas and New Year's there's a production car enduro special event happening as well, which is right up my alley because that's the, the series I do love the most. But I'm away from the rig, so I won't be competing in that one. But check it out if you can. Uh, 27th of December, I believe it is, roughly around then. So, um, But yeah, until next episode... Um, 
Thank you everyone who has been watching and tuning in. Thank you for all the subs where YouTube is growing uh, at the rate, better than the rate I expected, not at the rate, but better than the rate I expected, which is really good. Uh, the people we're seeing turning up the streams again uh, is really good. So thank you. Uh, we had you know, Mike Kohler again, uh, Mick, uh, sorry, Mick. Um, and we had uh, Griffin Gardner, uh, a few people like that. Uh, Connor Nixon was there a couple of weeks ago. I haven't chatted with him since then, but you know, we're having a lot of these um, old listeners and, and, and fairly important people in the industry still rocking up to the streams, especially when we put on V8, um, sorry, the Bathurst 1000. We had like, uh, there, was, there was heaps of people, especially when we put up the post that we were in it. Um, there was a heap of people in our division, even seeing Warren Henry and, and John Snell racing that. Same split that we were in um, on the weekend was really good to see. But uh, thank you, everyone, who, who is using and watching and consuming the content. It's been really good to see. Uh, but, yeah, until next episode, thank you all for now and bye.